Another example, example 10.6 talks about candy bar weights. Suppose that the wrapper of a certain candy bar lists its weight as 2.13 ounces. Naturally, the weights of individual bars vary somewhat. Machines are good, but um, let's be honest, you know, they're going to give a slightly different amount of chocolate or whatever the filling is every time. Now, suppose that the weights of these bars vary according to a normal distribution. So we're told that it's normal with a mean of 2.2 and a standard deviation of 0.04 ounces. So I know that this can be modeled by the normal distribution mean of 2.2, standard deviation of 0.04. What proportion of candy bars weigh less than the advertised weight? Now, it doesn't require you to do a drawing, but it does help. If I take a second, don't even have to label it perfectly or anything. Just, I know the center's at 2.2, that's what the machine can do. Um, I'm at 2.13, and they want to know way less than. Okay, so I want to know that area under the curve. Hopefully, the first thing you think of is I should use the Z table. So please take a moment, calculate it, and see if you can come up with the probability that, uh, the or the proportion, I should say, in this case, of that way less than the advertised weight. So please check your answer. We get that the probability that it's very low, it's less than 4% of candy bars weighs less than the advertised uh, amount advertised. So what proportion? It's about 4% that weigh less than the advertised amount. If the manufacturer decides that 4% is unacceptable, they may want to adjust the production process. Obviously, if this was in real life, you would have to talk to the production team to make sure that it was even possible. But they want to adjust it so that only one candy bar and a thousand weighs less than the advertised amount. What should the mean of the actual weights be, assuming that we don't change the standard deviation? Is this more or less than before? And explain why it makes sense. So once again, I would take a moment and I would draw a really quick picture. We know that we're not changing the advertised weight that's on the wrapper, but instead this area under the curve now, we want it to be one out of a thousand. So 0 0.001, we don't know what mu is. So now this is going to be effectively a new curve because we're changing where the standard, uh, where the, excuse me, where the mean is. So we're going to once again use a Z equals y minus mu over sigma. We know our y in this case, but we don't know our mu. We know the sigma because we're not changing the standard deviation. But now we need the z score from the table. Take a moment, check in the back, and come up with the z score, and then figure calculate out the mu. So you had to go inside the table to get the z-score, which is on the outside. Because remember, inside, underneath the curve is inside the table, and on the outside edges is where the z-score is. So the z-score was negative 3.1. And if you calculate it out, you would get the mu has to be 2.254 ounces, which is higher than what it was um, previously. Does it make sense that it's higher? Yeah, it does make sense. We're not changing the standard deviation but what we want are fewer that are under the advertised weight. So the only way to do that really is to move the mu up higher. So it is higher than the original, makes sense. We want to make sure very few are less than advertised, way less than that was advertised. In this case, they want to instead adjust the standard deviation. Please take a moment to read over part C and give it a shot yourself, and then come back and check your answer. Now, does this make sense? What happened to our sigma? Well, our sigma got smaller, because remember, we want to leave the weight of the machine, of the, um, the mean of the machine set the same, but what we're looking at is instead is adjusting that standard deviation. So we're able to use some of the information that we got from part B, in other words, we're able to use that z-score that we found because we still only want one in a thousand to be underweight. But now we need to make the standard deviation 
even smaller because we want to get this 2.13 further out into the tail. The only way to do that without, if we're not changing this mean, is to make the standard deviation smaller. So sigma is smaller, and this makes sense. It makes the um, standard stricter, so we need to reduce variability. And reducing variability is reducing that standard deviation. Final one on this section is if the manufacturer wants to save money and is going to, um, by adjusting the production process, the mean is reduced to 2.15 ounces, but only one in a thousand candy bars is less than the advertised weight, how small does the standard deviation have to be? I'm guessing it's going to have to be even smaller because this 2.2 is now becoming 2.15. So please take a moment and work on solving that and then come back and check your answer. Now, we can see that's a really small standard deviation. It may not even be achievable, but in this case, we're going to go with it. It makes sense, it's even smaller. We're squeezing that standard deviation even more because once again, we wanna have very few that are under the advertised weight, but we're also tightening up the standards, um, getting them, the advertised weight closer to the weight that it, the machine is being set at. Therefore, to keep a really small amount in the tail, we have to have a very, very small standard deviation. The last part of this note set is really leading into stat 252, but I'm going to do a quick intro here and I'll tell you the keys that you'll need to know for, the, for any exam. We can use the normal model in certain circumstances. We can be told to use the normal, um, if it's a good fit, or we, we can be told to use the normal model, or we'll, if we want it to be a good fit to you actually use the normal, you can look at the histogram of the data. And if it roughly is normal, you're in pretty good shape, or you can also look at a, the normal probability plot. If the normal model, if the normal model, excuse me, is reasonable, the plot, the points in the normal probability plot should be roughly a straight line which this is, so using the normal model would make sense. Going back to the baseball salaries though, if you look at that normal probability plot, which you'll come, you'll be working on doing in 252, the next course, but not in this course, you can see this is nowhere close to the straight line. And we started talking about what, whether we could use the normal uh, distribution, it didn't even make sense back in those first couple pages of this note set. So for this class, what I'd like you to know is that um, the, the normal probability plot should follow a straight line to use the normal distribution or the histogram of the, of the data should look pretty normal. That's it for um, the normal distribution for right now.